Hello folks. Do you want to travel into the future? Do you want to find out if they cure the coronavirus? Do you want to find out if the Earth will still be here in 10, 15 years? Do you want to find out the winning lottery numbers? I'm sure the answer is yes, but we're not going to do any of those things. We're going to find out what the future of electric scooters are like. Bit of an anticlimax. <laughs> That's right folks, welcome to my time capsule to the future and it's going to take us into the future and we're going to look at scooters. Alright, you happy with that? Because I found a few that tickle my fancy and I thought I'd share them with you and find out what you think. <laughs> Let's go. Fly! Time machine, fly! So the first scooter we're looking at is the Tor, the Tor scooter with the power of Thor. They don't claim it has the power of Thor, but it rhymed. After watching the introduction video, you will be suitably and very impressed. The video itself is very funny. It's very high quality, nicely shot, and really sells the scooter. But as a lot of us may have learned from Indiegogo campaigns and Kickstarter campaigns, myself included, a great video doesn't necessarily mean a great product. So let's go into the deets, shall we? Off the bat, it's a beautiful looking scooter. It looks very futuristic. They claim to be the first roadworthy scooter. Now that's coming from shades of the boosted rev. They claimed the same thing and I don't necessarily agree with that. There's tons of scooters out there with like the 010X just springing to mind, hydraulic brakes, massive wheels, big suspension. If that's not roadworthy, I don't know what is. But this this campaign is making the comparison with, with rental scooters, claiming that they are trash. And I guess they are when they're 9-bot ES2s and Xiaomi M365s that have been ridden, ridden to death. But I know a company like Voy is using the InMotion L9, which I thought was very safe very strong, very sturdy scooter and makes a very good rental scooter. You can watch my review of that there. So again, this company is playing on rental scooters being bad and personal ownership being better. Moving on, the big one, and I think this could make or break this scooter. It's got fold out flippy platforms, which I think is awesome because I stand in parallel, but the amount of hate I get on my videos saying, why don't you stand properly on your scooter, mate? And stand in a ballet third. I also do ballet, by the way, so I know how to stand in those kind of turned out positions, darling. So standing in parallel certainly suits me and it's quite neat and tidy that they fold away and it fits the scooter's aesthetic. But a lot of people might want to stand one foot in front of the other, which does arguably give you a better, stronger base, a wider center of gravity. So I think that is going to be a deal breaker with this scooter. But I, I, again, I like the forward thinking. It suits me. I stand in parallel, so maybe I'm a trendsetter. We've got big 12 and a half inch puncher resistant wheels, which is great. And hopefully they make up for the lack of suspension because the scooter itself is actually super light. It looks like a big old scooter, but it's 15.5 kilograms, which I think is, is awesome. I didn't expect it to be that light. And patented rear light projection technology, which suggests the light shines up onto your bum and makes your bum red and bright so people can see you. But I think that's great because obviously for drivers and people behind you, the rear light on pretty much every scooter is, is way down low. So that's cool. But if you've got a nice peach, why not show it off, right? They claim two brakes, but I, I, I don't really buy that. Having a regen brake and a physical brake, for me, doesn't really mean two brakes because regen brakes are very gradual. They don't really slow you down in like an emergency. I think most scooters should have two real brakes, however they're implemented. And I haven't even mentioned power. This thing goes 24 miles per hour, the same as the boosted rev. Again, lots of echoes of the boosted rev. You should watch my video on it. Although it doesn't exist, I really liked it and made the video in New York, so why not watch it? 24 miles per hour, 500 watt motor. I think that's going to be enough power and, and more than enough speed. And being Britishly designed, it seems to be Britishly weatherproof as well. We've got an IP55 rating, can be used in the rain. It's there in black and white. It should be able to be used in the rain. And, and it will potentially be ready, potentially by March 2021. I think this isn't awesome looking scooter very interesting will be wicked to try out go watch the video tell me what you think and let's move on to the next scooter Two, one. 
This is weird. We seem to have gone back to the past, to March 2019, where I originally pledged allegiance on Kickstarter to the Activo scooter. I was very impressed by the hubless wheels, and I thought this would be great to review, and I bought the scooter, and I don't have it. A year and a half later, and it doesn't exist. I think, I think they are shipping to places very slowly, but they haven't shipped to me. So alas, we can only talk about this scooter speculatively. So way back when, the instant draw was the hubless wheels, 1,000 watts in these wheels, amazing design, very futuristic, and I had to have one. On closer inspection, it's got shades of Xiaomi in it. It's kind of got a, a Xiaomi-like chassis and folding mechanism. It's got a ceramic brake, which is, I don't know what that is. Is it like made of pottery? Is it kind of like made of a bowl? Kind of the bowls locked down on the wheels? Dunno. We do have front wheel suspension, which is great. And again, 1000 watt motor will pretty much climb anything. And it's super light. 13 kilograms is awesome. Got a top speed of 18.6 miles per hour, which is good to see. And a claimed range of 15.5 miles. If I ever get it, I will probably do a range test. So yeah, apart from that, this was successfully funded ages ago. And I, and I know there's been COVID and I know there's been everything else and the world's upside down at the moment but I do really hope they they manage to ship this scooter because it looks really cool, it's original, and it's from the future. So I will link it below if you want a few more details on the Activo, but you never know, my, mine might show up soon and then I'll have a review for you as well. Okay, moving on. To the future! <laughs> oh, guys. Guys, the last scooter I wanted to bring you was the DeFi Luxury Hyper Scooter, the world's first Hyper scooter, wow, if that's not marketing hype, I don't know what is. But I've just come to click on the website and page not found. And I had a feeling about this. I don't know if it's disappeared, the scooter, but I think it's disappeared. That's a shame. It looked really cool, but I'm sure it was like five grand, which was just crazy. And it was more like an electric skateboard with a handle, I think. But it could be folded up like a suitcase and a briefcase and carried around. So, but yeah, so unfortunately, I can't tell you more about that. Let's look for some more scooters from the future. Oh, okay, it seems we've landed back in the past again because this scooter here is from like two or three years ago. It's another three-wheeled scooter which actually doubles as a kind of like carry-on luggage rucksack thing, which is pretty cool, especially if you're like me and take your scooter pretty much everywhere with you. There's a lot to like here. We've got removable batteries, which is great. Not many scooters have those. We've got adjustable handlebars. It folds down completely so you can just kind of lug it around. It's got a full-on dashboard display. Performance-wise, it's not really much to write home about. I think it can go 16 miles per hour. Um, a range of up to 20 miles, depending on if you use one battery or two batteries. But it's cute, it's neat. I don't think it may survive on the gnarly roads of England, but it would be perfect to go around airports in and stuff like that and travel with. But it, yeah, it's here, it's on Amazon, it survived, it got funded and, and here it is. Not necessarily from the future, it's from the past, but potentially worth a look at for the future. Okay guys, there you go, scooters from the future and what's more exciting than scooters from the future is rabbit food. Rabbit food from the future in my in my spaceship. I hope you enjoyed that video. I, I probably didn't cover them in the lengths of detail which you may have wanted, but there's three picks there of scooters which I find quite interesting that hopefully will make the light of day in the future so we can all enjoy them in the future. It's nice to see people innovating and I think it's such a fast moving new industry. It's quite exciting to be involved in and I think hopefully we're going to see a lot more innovation to come but perhaps you might want to share what innovation you would like to see in the future in the comments below. Maybe we can like create the most perfect scooter slash electric vehicle together by sharing in the comments below and make our own scooter from the future, or maybe not. And if I come across any other reasonably exciting scooters, maybe I will share them in a future video, or perhaps not. Okay, so um, this Doctor Who style TARDIS slash Volkswagen Golf is gonna go back to the past now. Actually, I don't wanna go back to the past. I don't wanna go back to 2020. I've had enough of 2020. So um, let's just pull the chain and see where we go. <laughs> or maybe not.